And recently we have released VL, and that's the topic of today. I'll start with a short introduction about what VL is, what it's intended to be. And after that, we see some patching. I think the first example, we will just patch in front of you that you have, a, have an idea how, how you like, create a, a, a node, how you set it up, and then see how you build stuff. And you just have to watch, just see how it's created. Uh, it's a very small example. And after that, we will start with the first example where you will um, patch together with us on the screen. So, <laughs> um, I, I make some claims, and you'll be the judge whether they are true later or whether they are alternative facts. <laughs> So we, we've worked on this for, I think, five years now. And we haven't done much with it itself until now. And then we released it in December, last December, so only one and a half months ago. And after that, we started to patch stuff ourselves with it. So we, we, we created um, our first example, like recording MIDI notes, parsing a MIDI file, stuff like that. And it really worked very well. We are, we are very excited about it. And it almost never crashed. I, I hear that Sable <coughs> did it a few times, but um, it, it really um, it, it doesn't feel like an alpha software. It's, it's really like it just works. And it's also a lot of fun. So if, if you get the ideas, if you understand how, 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 the, how things are supposed to work, and it's super fun to work with it because it's very concise in, in, in expressing, expressing stuff. And it's really powerful because unlike VVV, which is a, like a node-based library that you can patch, patch together, VL is an actual programming language. So you, can, you have a distinction between definition and application of stuff and, and you have everything that object-oriented programming languages can um, help you with. So that's, that's the claims. And so what can you do with it for now? It's basically the only thing you can do. So it's integrated in VUV, our like 15 years old media system. And it doesn't have much input or output to the outside world. It's, it's just there as a, as a language with which you can uh, express stuff. So you can just make VV nodes. But those nodes are automatically spreaded. So if you know VV, there is this feature of spreading where you can feed lists into every node and then the node will automatically process as many times as you put in uh, the, the data. And you can make multiple nodes and link them together with your own data types that you have created in VL, which is also very flexible and powerful. Yes. And a typical scenario would, would be you have here on top uh, some input data that you generate with an input device, hardware device or so. Then you pass it into a VL node, process it there with, with all the language feature and all the stuff you have, and then you output it to um, back to VV to either draw it or to do even more logic or transformation on the data. <coughs> so that's, that's the use case we, we have uh, for now. At some point, we are planning to release it as a standalone, but we are not there yet, so we, we really have to um, have much more stuff in the library, like drawing, of course, and hardware input devices. So, <coughs> as you may know, that um, VV has an integrated editor for C Sharp, which is an object oriented programming language. And um, so, the question is why would you 
use VL instead of C sharp. So I think that's also like a claim <laughs> that if you know VL right, then you have shorter development times. I think even much shorter for most of the problems because it's always running. And I think this is one of the greatest and biggest features that VL has, that it is able to always run, so your program is always running, and while you change the patch, so while you change your program, in the background your program is compiled, and then the old state of your program, all the data, how, how the, 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 the state of your program was, will be copied onto the new compiled program. This is a super advanced, advanced um, feature that, that no uh, language has for, uh, as, as I know. So. And this also allows you to always debug your program. So it runs, it will be, the state will be swapped from, from iteration to iteration, and you can always see the data, even if the data is on, an, on a different thread. So for example, if you have an audio thread, you can debug the audio thread, even in, in the sample loop where, where, where you have 44,000 samples per second, you can inspect samples. And this is just the beginning right now. You, you hover over some data and you see the current string representation, but there will be much more um, advanced debugging methods at some point. And also, this might be for creative people and for, for um, designers a, a, a very important point that you don't have to study computer science to use it. You basically just have to know how to click with the mouse to set it up and then you have to learn a few paradigms but there are much, much less paradigms than, than you have to learn for, for example, C Sharp or C++ or stuff like that in Java. Also, this is very interesting. For example, if, if you have to write a for loop or an if construct or stuff like that, it's, it's kind of typing more. Of course, a modern um, development environments support you with that, so you type for and then you make tab and it builds you the code. But in reality, it's just two clicks and you're done. Here. And this also has to do with um, the fact that in a visual language, you, you cannot do syntax errors because there's no such thing like forgetting a semicolon or like um, wrapping your head around big constructs of, of um, parentheses. Uh, they're just not there. You can just do program errors, but, but no syntax errors, which saves you a lot of time because um, a whole, like, um, a whole class of errors is not possible in the visual language. And, and uh, if you see your program, the data flow in your program in front of you, I think this might depend on, per, on the person, it is you, you, your, your, your mind is on a higher level than how you think about your program. If you see a line of code or maybe one function that fits on one screen, you, you don't have a, the, the mental scope about your, your, your program or your patch. But if you see a data flow representation of your program and you know how to read it, then you're always in, in a little bit higher level of thinking about your program, which, which helps you to not be carried away in details. And the last point is also very interesting. If you know what generics are, um, most, most of the time you are not using it in a textual language because it's a lot of work to, to type because you have to define like type parameters and stuff like that. And in VL it's just by default generic. Everything is, is, is generic. It's just the code works for every type. And we will see a, an example of that if you don't know what generics are. So I think this is our, these are the, the pro points how, why, why you would use a visual language instead of C sharp. Of course, there are negative points, and, and there, there are some algorithms that, that are much 
neater to express in a, in a textual language, of course. So, yeah. And if you use VVV, so the question would be, why would you use VL as, as of for now? So at the first, it should be very easy to do the transition from VV to VL because most of the nodes that you know from VV, they are there and you can patch them together exactly like in VV and they will do the same as, uh, have the same functionality as in VV. So first of all, you don't have to really get into like all the new features, you can just create an LFO put it into some function and output it to VV. But if you, um, if you create patches, you never have to think about like stuff like spreading or if, the in, if somebody inputs more, more slices than you think about in, in, in your patch or so. So it's, it's much better and easier to structure you patch because of all the object-oriented um, organizing features you have in VL now. And of course, generics. So if, for example, in VV you have um, four pluses, or even, I think there are nine or 10 for color, for, for strings, for values, everything. And in VL it's just one plus and it works for every type that has a plus defined. In, in, the in the library. And you can even define your own plus. If you, if you make your own data type, for example, some particle or so, and you know how to add to particles, you make a plus. And then every code that uses a plus will work for your particle. So you can just extend the library of VL if you just make some basic arithmetic nodes and all the, all the library stuff will work for your own types. And the collections are uh, generic. In VV, you have like spreads of colors, spreads of values, spreads of strings. And in VL, it's just one spread with a type argument, and you can put in whatever you want. Every type is possible. You can do spread of spread of spread of spread. It's everything possible. It will be just solved by the compiler, and it just works. Yeah, yeah, this is the object-oriented programming metaphors. Um, this might be a little drawback this, that you don't have implicit spreading in VL. You, you can, for example, not connect a collection to a plus because a plus has one value input in VL. And VV, you could connect a spread or a list to a plus and the plus will automatically like, be spreaded. This is not possible in VL yet. We have ideas how this could work, but it's not possible at the moment. But you have loops, which is more powerful, a, a little bit more work to set up if you just want to add two lists together. But in the end, it's much more powerful. Then, currently in an experimental state, but it's relatively easy to set up background threads so that you can use all cores of your machines to, to calculate stuff in the background that you don't need in every frame or so. So that's a quick overview about the library as we have it right now in VL. So the mathematics, 2D and 3D geometry uh, stuff it is already much more powerful than, than in VV. We've imported um, almost everything that is math related from um, from Sharpdx, which is a 3D library. Then all the logic stuff, you have, for example, an if construct that you can do conditional execution of, of stuff. And we have a lot of string modifier, colors already there, and so on. Files, animation. Also networking is already there, and the async, which lets us uh, put stuff on the background. Still missing, that would make the VL as a standalone workable is input output devices that VV has like hundreds of them. 
and then like structured data input output, and there's no graphics output right now. So that's that's also the reason why it's currently integrated in VV. And you can really, if if you work with um, well, you, you can decide whether you just do a little node which just does one, one little part of your logic in, in the program, or whether you like patch all your UI logic in VL. So the how deep you go into it is, is just up to you. Okay, um, so this was the introduction. So now let, let me quickly explain what we are going to do today with, with you. Um, the examples that are in, in, in brackets, they will be only be demoed by us, so you don't have to patch with us. If you want, you can do it, but we'll just show it quickly. And the two on, 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 the, on the lower, we will do together. The first one is a very simple example of having a few values and resampling them into a higher amount of values with interpolation between um, the input values. The second example is, is a bit more like nerd stuff, where you open a file, then you read the byte, you read the, the header of the, f of the file, which is all possible in VL. And then you do even some bit shifting that you take bytes, you interpret like two bytes, interpret them as an as a unsigned integer and stuff like that, it's all possible. But I think this example is like very um, like detailed and we can look how far we come and put this on the end. Mm. And the uh, first example that we will do together is the connect all example, which is this picture here, which looks like, a, like star signs. That which will just have two dimensional points and depending on a on a different uh, distance threshold, we will generate a line between them. So this will be the first example. And then the last one, which is a little bit more extended, will have stuff like interaction and like dynamic instantiation of stuff and so on. Uh, yeah, just a, as I explained, it is the interpolation. And this is what the patch looks like, so very simple. MIDI header and the patch. From the, the MIDI file, this is interesting because we can put all the parsing code into a background thread and it will just load the file and send you an event when it's finished. So to connect all, the yeah, distance threshold, and it's also very small, so it will be like half an hour, I think, we will be through it. And the ancient example will be then more, um, a little bit uh, longer. So you will be able to generate new agents on the screen by middle click. And then if you click them, they will change their color and they will change their movement behavior. So we will make four behaviors for them. And if you click them, you cycle through the behaviors. And this is what the patch will look in the end. 